Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and I've had the honor and privilege of being the president of the North American Menopause Society for 2017. I sit on the board of directors, and I am so fortunate today to be joined with an excellent cardiologist, Dr. Beth Abramson. Beth, can you tell us where you are and what you do? Sure. I'm a preventive cardiologist with an interest in women's health, and for years I have been trying to say that women are at risk of heart disease. We need to be aware of this as healthcare practitioners. This is our leading health threat. So let's talk exactly on that realm of why our menopausal care clinicians, healthcare practitioners, nurses need to particularly think about heart when it comes to menopause. Because if you look at the American Heart Association website, the statistics have not changed, same, in, same as in Canada, across North America and the world. Heart disease and stroke account for more deaths than most forms of cancer combined. And it hits women after midlife by and large. Well, when a woman reaches menopause, her risk factors for coronary heart disease and stroke start to increase. Risk of high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol. And if you have some genes or a family history or you're unfortunately smoking, then your risk becomes accelerated. And women tend to catch up to men five to seven years after midlife or menopause. And we need to address a woman's health threat as she enters med midlife so that she can start leading heart healthy behaviors. Mm -hmm. It's never too late right. or too early to address your risk, make changes and understand what your risk is. Okay, so from a cardiologist's point of view, for our menopause cl clinicians and our menopause practitioners, I want your take on estrogen and what we call the window of opportunity, the timing hypothesis, safe, not safe, you know, where does controversy lie? Okay, so uh, I think it is safe for estrogen in women who are at lower cardiovascular risk. And by definition, 50 to 60 puts a woman at lower risk. Right. Over the age of 60, age drives cardiovascular risk. The benefit or detriment of, of hormones, and specifically estrogen, is probably more uh, magnetized. So I think it's actually the low risk population that is not going to be harmed or necessarily helped by estrogen. The window of hypo hypothesis mm -hmm. Sorry, the window of opportunity. The window of opportunity, timing yeah, hypothesis. That's, timing, that's right. Yeah. So we, we talk, the, it's always it's always interesting to think about, but the clinical trial data just really isn't borne out. You know, we don't have any protective effects of estrogen or estrogen progesterone in the long run. But when we look at that cohort of women mm -hmm. who are between 50 and 60 versus 60 to 70, 70 and 80. Certainly the outcome on cardiovascular morbidity and mortality looks a whole lot better in the younger population. Because their absolute risk is lower. So we can take estrogens, we could take cholesterol medications, we could take blood pressure pills, and the absolute effect is the same across the a population. Mm -hmm. It depends on that risk. I'm not going to give a young child a cholesterol pill right. or estrogen, but the effect will be the same, and the absolute risk is determined by who is in that population. So by and large, the studies have been relatively healthy, relatively young right. perimenopausal woman, women. As we get out there, and as we look at women who have cardiovascular disease, or who are older at risk for cardiovascular disease, the data does not support a protective effect right. of estrogen. It's really within that first you know, decade of use where I think women can be reassured that if they're using it for intractable hot flashes, they don't bear the cardiovascular Absolutely. risk. Absolutely, it, it would be and safe. And I think that's an important message. Yes lowest possible dose, shortest duration of time for your severe symptoms of the menopause so we, from my perspective. We change that to an appropriate dose for an appropriate person for an appropriate period of time. And that's fair enough. Um, I do have women who post myocardial infarction mm -hmm. have severe symptoms right. of menopause. And then beyond the guidelines which suggest stopping hormones, for quality of life we may have to protect them in other ways with high dose statins. Right. So there is certainly a role in, in women, um, but the main role is not for cardiovascular protection. Absolutely. We will never see it for chronic disease protection, but just the reassurance that we are doing no harm. And now the ever debate, aspirin. Well, you know, aspirin is as effective or ineffective in women and in men, <laughs> young and old. There's a lot of data out there that suggests aspirin is not effective until you have a developed cardiovascular disease, heart so, attack, or stroke. So, primary so I do prevention? not use it for primary prevention. I know. Secondary prevention? Yes. And for primary prevention, women, let's say, who are smokers, high cholesterol, you know, at risk but have not had an event, mm -hmm. 
on cholesterol medication under the age of 65? Right. The, the, the benefit versus risk equation is not clear and we are not recommending aspirin for primary prevention in those individuals. You know, the harder thing to do is to get your patient to stop smoking. Absolutely. Take a placebo for a walk, try and maintain a healthy body weight, because we all know that as a woman ages and goes through midlife, her distribution of fat changes. Right. She goes from a gynoid distribution, which is not harmful, to an android and central adiposity, mm -hmm. puts an individual at risk. And those are the things we need to deal with. So bottom line messaging to our healthcare practitioners who are looking at menopausal women, treat their symptoms, manage the risk. Absolutely, thank you so much. My pleasure.